Many people believe that they know certain historical and world facts simply because they've been told that a thing is. And sometimes a story told over and over is said to be true and is in actual fact false. But suddenly there was a change, the passing of something. I knew not what. Except now all that remained was this gaunt quiet. Napoleon Bonaparte was said to be quite a short leader. Although if you actually go by the measurements, he was in fact 5 foot 2 according to French feet. Which equates to, in British feet, 5 foot 6.5. So he was in fact for the time a little bit over the average for the average Frenchman. Making the idea that he was in fact a petite general, a small leader, ruling over the French Empire. A little bit ridiculous and simply came from the kind of propaganda which the British amongst others produced. Danish pastries. It's commonly presumed that Danish pastries actually come from Denmark. In actuality a lot of the history goes back to the Austrians and were eventually called Danish due to a Danish chef who popularized them within Western Europe and eventually America. So since the early 20th century they've become known as Danish pastries despite the fact that the tradition goes back much further. And it's interesting to note that within Denmark and much of Scandinavia, these pastries were known as Viennese bread, referring to, of course, Vienna, and of course, naturally, Austria. Meteorites are hot when they hit the Earth. Many people naturally presume that the idea of meteorites hitting the Earth means that they have to go for the atmosphere and will in fact heat up considerably. This is true, however, we must remember that meteorites basically are in a very cold state indeed in the depths of space. Of course when they come through the atmosphere the outer layers will heat up massively as indeed will the centre to some degree. It's basically in the depths of space for millions if indeed not billions of years at a temperature not far from absolute zero. Many of them come down to earth even with frost on them where the outer layers have burnt off and broken up in the atmosphere, some of the inner layers have remained extremely cold. So since we're not talking about molten masses falling through the atmosphere which are already hot, there's not the retention of the heat enough to make it so, when it does actually pass through the atmosphere, that it will in fact remain incredibly hot. Some do, that's true, depending on what they're actually made of. Obviously different materials react in different ways, some will heat up more, and of course the actual form itself, the actual shape and size, will be a major factor. Equally, its descent, has it gone through the atmosphere, um, well, relatively uh, directly, or has it gone at a angle? So it's carried on through the atmosphere for longer, and it's basically burnt up and heated up a lot more. These factors can be very large when it comes down to the cooling or heating of an object passing through the atmosphere. Water spins in different directions. This, of course, is referring to things like sinks, where people say, Water spins in a particular direction, depending on which part of the world you're in. That's to say northern or southern hemisphere. The idea that you're affected by the electromagnetic field of the Earth or the gravitational field of the Earth isn't actually taking place. It's an old wives' tale relating to, uh, very often, things like cartoons which have simply carried on the legend. There may be a particular direction which takes prominence, and it may simply be down to which tap you use the most. But really there's no great connection between that and the uh, gravitational field or the magnetic field of the Earth. Bats are blind. A common misconception is that bats are in fact blind. That they simply navigate via their own senses, their little sonar. But the actuality is they do have some visual ability. But they're very light sensitive. This is due to their environment. So naturally you're going to end up with a very light sensitive creature which is dazzled by daylight. Bats very often use echolocation to basically detect things when their eyes fail them. Because their eyes are quite limited, and because they're very light sensitive, they're suited to caves. They do actually need this to actually get themselves around and about. Because when the light isn't there, when there's actually no real light for them to actually navigate, they do require other senses. Chameleons change their colour to match their surroundings. It's an interesting idea, a common idea, but the actuality is they change colour according to their emotions. They don't actually base it on their environment. They're not so much trying to blend into a tree or a bush or the uh, ground near the base of a bush or whatever the case may be. They change their colour as a way of 
basic communication with their fellow chameleons. For example, a chameleon that is frightened will turn black. A duck's quack doesn't echo. This idea was very popular with some of the smart facts which came out with the early internet and became popularised as a factual claim, when in actuality the claim itself is not supported. In fact, it got to such a point that respected scientists actually decided to take time out of their day to actually test this claim. In fact, a scientist from the University of Salford, he did a series of tests, confirmed an actual fact that quacks do indeed echo. Such tests can be done so easily simply by placing a duck in an echo chamber. It quacks, there's an echo, and so the belief is kind of confounded. And so the idea falls flat on its face. Hitler was an atheist. There are many quotes from Adolf Hitler where he condemns certain aspects of religious belief, but there are a great many more where he talks about the value of faith and indeed the Christian faith. He's a man that demanded people pay allegiance to him and God and Germany. In many ways, due to the fog of war, people perpetuated the idea that people like Adolf Hitler and the other great dictators of Europe were in fact non-Christian. And of course we know from historical evidence that in fact Adolf Hitler was in fact raised Roman Catholic. He was a very religious man at certain points in his life, although it's debatable on how religious he actually was in the time that he reigned over Germany. His religion was most probably a non-factor when it came down to a lot of his actions. He may have justified some of them through certain means. The fact that he was raised Roman Catholic doesn't mean that we should condemn all Catholics. The fact that some people claim he was an atheist, even though it's not actually evident, does not mean we should condemn atheists. The fact that we um, can point to certain pagan-esque elements and Norse blood myth ideological points does not mean we should condemn all people who have a pagan or Norse kind of belief. I think the most obvious thing when it comes down to Adolf Hitler is the idea in Mein Kampf, which he goes over many times, is the glory of Christianity, the pleasure he found in Christian festivals and Christian events. And he even seems to have gained his anti-Semitism from his Christian roots. Some of the first treaties he made were with Christian churches, not least the Catholic Church. He also ridiculed occultism and neo-paganism, which was relatively popular in Germany at the time. Despite using some of the imagery, some of the ideas and the propaganda value, in actual fact it seems that he was in fact uh, very much Christian and favoured certain Protestant elements of Christianity despite being raised Catholic. Humans evolved from monkeys. One of the most common misconceptions about Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection is that Darwin claimed we evolved from chimpanzees. Darwin never actually said this, nor any respectable biologist, but this is repeated over and over by creationists and by other people who have an axe to grind. Simple ignorance or propaganda purpose leads people to make these sweeping statements and they might even say that Darwin said it. And the reason why they do this is because they're either pushing an agenda or because they simply don't know any better. It was initially spread by religious zealots during the 19th century in order to try and discredit Darwin and the theory of evolution. Even though we are very closely related to modern day apes, including chimpanzees, as well as monkeys and other creatures. We share common ancestors with modern apes. We're not actually evolved from them. They have not remained stationary. They've been changing too, as indeed all life does, little by little. But we are on a different branch of the tree. And you do have to go back to find where the common links are, these common ancestors. So the confusion is where people say, there's apes. How did a person come from an ape? Well, you've got to think small processes over a long period of time, not with modern apes, but with previous forms of ape-like creature, which we basically came from. And as I say, it's shared ancestry. So basically modern apes would share the ancestor, but the variation in different directions and the changes over the course of millions of years has led us to being very distinct creatures indeed. And you can make the same argument about us and flatworms, or us and goldfish. Pick any creature, including plants, in fact, 
and you can trace it back to where we had a common ancestry. If you can't disprove it, it must be real. If you're stating that someone needs to disprove it, otherwise it must be true, you can apply that kind of logic to practically anything. And if your level of evidence is, well you can't disprove me, you can simply place your radical claim outside of the feasible realm of testability to try and make it so it can't be tested and simply pose that it must be true, even though you have no reason to actually believe it is true. Such as a trans-dimensional unicorn in your back garden, which is known to you, and only because of your special sensitivity which allows you, but can't be detected or tested by any other means, because it's operating in a different dimension which connects to this reality. Such ideas and words, justifications for gibberish, serve no good purpose. You're simply suggesting a thing is true, without the ability to show it's true, or even suggest it's true, and you're saying, prove me wrong. But when it comes down to it, because you're making the positive claim, you should be the one to provide the actual evidence.